Hi, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be discussing Xeriscape. And essentially, Xeriscape is gardening with the minimal use of supplemental water. This is more often achieved by appropriate plant selection, good garden design, and efficient irrigation practices. In today's video, I'll be interviewing Ben Gilliland, who is the owner of Grizzly's Landscape and Nursery. He recently went all in on a Xeriscape of his own, uh, removing his entire front lawn and replacing it with these beautiful pockets of color and interest. Ben is passionate about water conservation and he really enjoys helping homeowners create a more water efficient garden. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Talk to me a little bit about Xeriscape and why you love it so much. Well, it gets to be a big hassle to take care of a bunch of grass that does absolutely nothing for you except look green. Mm -hmm. uh, water, if you want to keep the weeds out, chemicals, or you're on your hands and knees all day long pulling weeds out that you don't want. So I finally gave up. Was it uh, last year when the drought was so bad, I quit watering mm -hmm. completely. Didn't water the whole year because I knew what I was going to do. And we decided to tear the whole thing out. And if I'm preaching Xeriscape to people, then I've got to live Xeriscape. Okay, that's fair. So yeah. that, that was my whole idea behind that. Okay. Um, and so you installed this, how, how many days did it take? Because you did your whole front yard. Yeah, that, that yard took us two and a half to three days Okay. to rip out everything that was out there. And I saved probably half the plants that are out there. I dug up and saved and mm -hmm. put them back in. I lost two out of all that. Gotcha. So. Well, I, I mean, you guys are trained professionals. And so you got the know-how and the equipment. Um, but one thing I will say that I've learned as a gardener is... Um, don't let the size of the job overwhelm you. Break it down in smaller phases. You don't have to do it all in one day, um, but if you feel like you do want to do it all in one day, Ben is a great person and his crew to hire. Do you have to do any prep for Xeriscape? My yard, mm -hmm. for soil prep is not a good example because when I had grass, I was composting it every single year. Okay. So when we cut everything out, I didn't bring anything in. Okay. But if you cut it out and you've got nothing but caliche, which is most new homes, then yes, you will come in and amend the soil where you're planting because your natives will adapt to what's around them. But we give them a little head start. If we don't want to make a mound anywhere and plant, we do what we call pocket planting. Okay. We'll dig out a bigger hole, put some really good soil in with that plant. So by the time its roots hit the native soil, it's got a good head start. And okay. It's going to do well. Okay, that's a really great strategy. So don't have to completely bring yards and yard, cubic yards of topsoil and you can just literally create a nice pocket of good soil. My yard, I didn't put any kind of irrigation out there. Mm -hmm. I've watered twice in six months. Yeah. Seven, eight months now. If you want your natives to, to bloom frequently, you'll go water them once a week. I'll water mine when they tell me they need water. Gotcha. When they stop blooming, I'll give them a little water. Okay. All the, uh, the blue mealy sage out there, they weren't blooming until a couple of days ago because I don't water them every single day. That's also a huge bonus because some folks don't, if you don't have irrigation already set up in your on your property, that can be an extra cost. But with xeriscaping, a lot of times you don't need it because you are using such drought tolerant plants that maybe you're doing it once a month or maybe a little bit more frequently as you establish the plants. But yeah. eventually those plants are gonna probably need very little supplemental watering. That's correct. So. We put this in in December. Mm -hmm. Everything out there was dormant. A lot of people don't like us to plant dormant plants because they don't believe they're coming back. Yeah, okay. Dormant's not dead. Right. So once I planted those in December, before Christmas, we watered them right after we planted them and just ignored them. Okay. And every one of them, except for two, survived. Gotcha. And I've got 21 plants. What are your favorite sort of perennial natives hmm. that you like for landscape. like give me your top three that you really like yeah, that, that's hard okay but, <laughs> so my top three mm -hmm. would be any of the salvia gray guys autumn sages mm -hmm. the blue mealy sage mm -hmm. and i'm guess i'm gonna go with the other one because of its height is flame acanthus okay those are solid picks i yes. for sure i feel like my top two are also autumn sage and mealy blue sage because they have just I don't do anything with them mm -hmm. and they're alive and they're flowering and the autumn sage can potentially remain green for you throughout the winter 
yep. most unless it gets really really cold so we we talked about some of the pros for xeriscaping do you have any cons that you want to talk about <clears throat> uh the cons might be um discovering where you have runoff problems that you didn't know you had okay or soggy areas in your yard that you didn't realize you had because you had grass there uh and and maybe maybe clean up my yard i've got crepe myrtles that have been there for 40 years mm -hmm. crepe myrtles are messy trees yeah they are so they get in the rocks and if you don't blow them out quick enough they'll cake in there and you you, you got to get really down and dirty to get it out yeah so sometimes a cleanup can be harder but if you stay on top of it not as frequently as mowing grass mm -hmm. but if you stay on top of it you can keep it neat looking if that's what you want gotcha okay you mentioned something drainage mm -hmm. and so going back to like preparing for xeriscaping that might be something really you do want to pay attention to if you already know you've got a drainage issue make sure you address it because a lot of times with xeriscaping, you're using a lot of things like mulch and you're using rocks and you can actually use rocks to help you direct water mm -hmm. away from certain trouble spots. Yeah. And so you can be strategic about where you're gonna put those things. One con that I have in my mind, and I don't know that it's maybe any different for any landscaping, is the weeding. Mm. Yeah. And so weeding, I mean, when you, cause, I'm, weeds will just grow anywhere they go they'll obviously grow in concrete cracks and so having a rock garden bed can sometimes be tricky at least for me it has um i even have a large area of my yard that's nothing but granite and weeds are growing on top mm -hmm. of that and i have weed barrier down um so how do you handle your weeds if they pull easily i pull them okay uh, there's one called uh spurge it just grows flat and it'll jump in there but it comes up really easy uh, so i just pull it uh, if i get crazy millet grass growing up there i just pluck it out of the ground uh, but if it's bermuda that one's you can pull it to make it look good instantly or the nuts edge but that lasts for a couple days before it sticks its head back out and says oh i got you right and so i try to go the least offensive way to nature with vinegar um, at the nursery, we have 25% acid. Uh, they've got we've got something called burnout. It's got citric acid and everything in it. But the Bermuda and Nuts Edge take a special kind of treatment. My favorite tool, though, is something called a flame weeder. Oh yeah. Not great in mulch because yeah. you might set it on fire. Yeah. But it's like a blowtorch, and really great for an extensive rock bed. You have to be careful because you can flame up your regular plants, and that's mm -hmm. not the goal. Um, but, uh, but that's something I really like for like my granite walkways yep. and things like that. And it's chemical free. You just attach it to like a propane tank yep. that you'd stick on your grill. And, um, that's another tool in your toolbox. Um, I think it, it works. I've mm -hmm. got one that I use as well. Yeah. Um, if you get the ground too hot, it'll melt the weed berry. If you got that under there. Oh, yep. Good point. So pay attention to that. <laughs> okay. But yeah, it, it works extremely well. It's not a permanent solution, even for the Bermuda or the nuts oh, no. edge, but uh, it's kind of fun to use too. Yeah. What would you say your common misconceptions, the common misconceptions are that you hear about xeriscaping? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. When I mentioned xeriscape to people before we started educating them, they think, oh, we don't want rocks and cactus. Okay. So they think all they can hear see is rocks and cactus. And I say, no, no, no we've got every color under the sun in our texas natives that are perfect for your xeriscape because there means dry our plants love dry weather when researching xeriscaping before coming to talk to you i did come across something called zero scaping like z-e-r-o where you don't have any plants it's just like rocks but i'm going to tell you there's going to be some weeds so always uh, you might as well put the plants you want in there um, but you don't have to go full on Phoenix, Arizona. That's what I hear you saying. That's right. Now you can, if you don't ever want to water a plant, yeah. put in prickly pear, put in uh, um, red yucca, put in soft leaf yucca, put in agave. You water them when you put them in and just walk away. Yeah. What did you want to add? Do you have anything to add about xeriscaping or? Yeah, so for my yard, I started off xeriscaping and little island beds okay and that's still a xeriscape it's just a small one 
Gotcha. Uh, and then I would add, every year I would add, half my yard was Xeriscape before I ripped the rest of it out. And if you want to start on your own, then have somebody else come in and do the hard stuff, then you can do that too. Yeah, some of the heavy lifting, yeah. and then you can kind of go from there. If you're interested in finding more drought tolerant native Texas plants, check out these next couple of videos. Until the next time, y'all take care.